Hello and welcome to One Cool Thing, PC Mag's daily show where we show you one cool thing which we are testing out here in the PC Mag Labs. I am Sasha Segan, this is Rob Marvin, and we have a very cool thing for you here today, but before we get to the Snapchat spectacles which Rob is uh, wearing on his head right now. I'm recording you right now. Oh, I see it, I see the ring, Ooh. I see the ring, and we'll discuss the necessity of the ring. Uh, during this show. But before we get to the Snapchat spectacles, let me do my traditional intro, which is that if you are watching us live on Facebook, then uh, please comment and ask questions. Social Pete is here to take your comments and questions. If you are watching us later on YouTube, then please like and subscribe and uh, consider coming over to Facebook at 10 a.m. Eastern on weekdays uh, to join the discussion about all the cool things, the hundreds, the thousands of cool things that we check out here at PC Mag all the time. So many cool things. So many cool things. But the cool thing today is these spectacles, and these are version two of Snapchat's uh, uh, glasses cameras, right? Yeah, I mean, you, technically, uh, you, the Snap likes to refer to them as augmented reality glasses, but they're really just kind of an action cam for your face. Yeah, I, there's nothing that's augmented reality no, about them. There's no all. screen showing you what's, you know, showing you information about what's nope. happening in the world, right? Not at all. Yep, they're just... Uh, Camera connected glasses that pick up pretty good uh, video and audio. Okay, so so I'm looking at these glasses right now, and you should face towards the camera so everyone can see yeah. your glasses. I'm looking at these glasses right now, and uh, the first thing that strikes me, of course, are the two circles in the corners. Now, are yep. those both cameras? Yep, they're both cameras, although there's only one um, light up LED ring, which, um, as I'm going to press the button here, will show you uh, when it's rotating is how you know you're being recorded. And you can also double tap the LED ring to check your battery level. Um, and then, yeah, but there are two dual facing cameras that are 115 degree lenses because Snap wants them to kind of mimic the human eye, which you can see when you upload the snaps to the app, um, you get sort of this circular effect. So it turns out to be a little fish eye -y. Yeah, a little bit. So more the fish eye than the human eye. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, now is it taking stereo images with the two cameras? Um, yeah, well, there is the one of the couple one of the new features. This is, uh, I mean, I tested the first version too. Um, one of the few new features in this is that instead of just taking videos, of which you press the button once and uh, it takes a ten second snap, you can press it multiple times to take sort of like a thirty, a twenty mm -hmm. or thirty second. Mm -hmm. But you can also now hold it down to take a still image. Okay, okay. So now, uh, these glasses, they are available in a bunch of different colors, yep. right? Are they available with prescription lenses? Yes, you can get them with prescription lenses. There's a particular provider they're using for this version called Lensable, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, you can uh, do that on the website. There's a couple of different combos, uh, you know, color frame lens combos that they have named uh, very exotic, uh, like, you know, Daybreak and Midnight and mm -hmm. um, color combos. Although the last ones we had were just sort of straight black, which had um, very bright yellow rings around the cameras, which mm -hmm. were a bit noticeable. These, I mean, whether or not you feel that these are, are more stylish is, a, you know, in the eye of the beholder. But I will say that I got less looks walking around the city testing these than I did testing the first version, which you could take that to mean that these are a little less uh, noticeable. Or that people or are that more people used, used to them now. Or that people are just used to being recorded with... Uh, yep. Yeah. So now, uh, resolution and battery life. Um, the battery life, you get about, uh, you get anywhere between 70 and 100 snaps out of this, which, uh, I mean, could, depending on your use, could last a couple hours, a couple days. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I found that after testing it very heavily for, you know, an hour or two, uh, I'd used about 75% of the battery. But the good news is that you don't necessarily have to use, you don't have to plug it in right away. If you are out and about, um, you know, at, a, you know, Snapchat influencer pool party or, you know, very relatable things like that in which you'd need a pair of these, you can use the charging case, which carries about four additional charges in it. Okay. Um, and then you've got this, uh, you know, the cord right here, which can, a magnetic cord that snaps into the side of the mm -hmm. case and also goes on the glasses themselves. Okay. Um, under the, where is it? I lost it. It's so slight that you don't mm. even realize where it is. Very low key. Yeah. So now let's talk about getting. Let's talk about uh, getting the photos off of the glasses. Yep. Um, how do they like? How do they transmit? What do they transmit to? 
Okay, so it all happens over Wi-Fi. Okay. Um, I mean, I'm not going to do the pairing process here, but you essentially you pair the spectacles to your individual Snapchat app, mm -hmm. uh, and when you're on Wi-Fi, or I mean, the the snap the spectacles will hold the snaps in here um, until you're on Wi-Fi, and then they'll sync automatically. So right now we're connected to the lab's Wi-Fi network, and I've got my Snapchat app here. I'm going to show you guys how you get to the page. So we're on the main Snap. Uh, page and if you click the little memories tab here um, it will show you a little spectacles icon and here we go and now oh the spectacles are unpaired I'm gonna pair them again I was literally just doing this now you didn't mention the resolution I think um, I'm not I mean the, the they're pretty HD resolution mm -hmm. um, the, what I found with the last version and with this version that you, you get surprisingly good um, HD video as well mm -hmm. as pretty crisp audio, hmm. which, you, or, which I was kind of surprised about. And then one of the things that Snap said that they improved in this was the audio. Um, to be honest, my operating theory is that they just sort of took the hundreds of thousands of unsold first version spectacles and... Uh, slapped a new coat of paint on them and a couple new features. Yeah, I mean that gets to that gets to another big question, which are what are the differences between the version one spectacles and the version two spectacles? Yep. Well, the design is about the same. They changed the they're you know they're a little bit slighter in the build, um, but other than that, they're pretty much the same. You can take photos with them. Uh, they're waterproof is the is the big thing. Mm -hmm. We did test the fact that they're actually waterproof, um, and that's about it. it uh, a couple other software improvements. All right, it's. Not pairing. Live demo failed. This yep. happens all the time in live demos. Every yeah. time. Anyway, but you would be able to see that um, now you, like, you can see all the different stories that I've taken here. And if I click on one, you can see what I saw. Here, let's... Um, can let's, I try them on? Yeah. The new My spectacles photo shoot. You may definitely try them on. Let's see, how do I look in these things? So. Chic. Millennial chic. Mm. Yeah, and it's uh, definitely, definitely sunglasses. Yep. Um, they are sunglasses. I do feel like the bulges in the edges of my vision are a little noticeable. Do you get used to that easily? Uh, you do, but also the at least at least the left bulge. Um, if you uh, press the button, you'll see you can actually see there's an inner LED that will show you when it's recording. Oh yeah, yeah, um, there's a little white light that comes comes into my eye so that I can see, see it's it recording. Right before the end of the snap, you'll, it'll start to blink to show you that it's about to end. Yep, there it is. Um, and it'll also turn red if your battery's low. Okay, okay. Let's take some questions. Has Snap said anything about, I don't know, allowing you to use these with any other apps? Have you nope. seen any, Or have you seen anyone like hack it? Well, you can, uh, I mean, you can sort of do the same trick that a lot of people do with Snapchat now which is you use it for the filters and then download that file and upload it to Instagram or anything else that you mm -hmm. want to use. But yeah, the, the biggest problem with these is that there's not a whole lot of utility unless you're a Snapchat influencer who spends a lot of time at pool parties. Uh, you know, there's not, there's not a whole reason to buy this over the first one. It's actually $20 more expensive mm -hmm. than the first version, which was $129.99, this is $149.99. Um, but yeah, there's, they only work with your Snapchat app, uh, although you can, as I, Found when I was testing this, um, you know, take tons of video and then download it directly onto your phone or up to the cloud and is, use it wherever you want. Is the original version also still on sale though? Um, there, it's not on snail, on sale through Snapchat's app. Oh, there's, okay, but there's Snapchat. probably a lot of them on e on eBay. Hundreds of thousands, I would guess. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because Snap, it's it's interesting because this is all part of. You know, we Snap is the name of the company, but I still think of them as Snapchat. They are they really have been trying to repurpose themselves into being more than a social app company and kind of failing, aren't they? I would agree that they've been failing. I mean, even just in the perception of these compared to the first version. The first version had this viral rollout. They were, as we remember, they were the hardest thing to get for a long time. Yeah, we had to <laughs> we had to send multiple people to multiple locations to wait online for hours to get the first set of Snapchat spectacles. Yeah, and by the time they finally came out, the buzz has kind of died down, and they really didn't sell as many as they thought they would. Mm -hmm. This version they put on sale right away. You can buy it straight from the, the Spectacles.com website. Mm -hmm. uh, and I mean, it's, it's coming at a point where Snaps. You know, stock prices at their lowest point since their IPO. The their perception compared to Instagram, which has been stealing all their features, is pretty bad right now. It's not a great time for the company. 
On the other hand, I've been impressed to see uh, I've been impressed to see that there isn't a lot of backlash in the way that there was backlash against Google Glass no. in terms of uh, people taking pictures of other people with their glasses on the street. Right. Well, that was a very specific design choice with the first version, which is the you know when it's recording, that's that's the reason you can see it with the ring here, so that you don't get that Google Glass effect of people you know never knowing whether you're recording them mm -hmm, or not. Mm -hmm. Question. Do you think Facebook will steal this idea? Uh, I think if Snap makes any money off this, they will. But if not, they'll kind of let the they'll, they'll they'll let Snap uh, flounder. We'll see. Facebook's uh, never really had a great track record with hardware. hardware. Uh, we'll see if they ever release that that uh, smart home uh, rumored. Device. Yeah, Facebook has failed to brand several phones. Yeah. Um, and also, I mean, let's remember, as Rob said, the first version of Snapchat Spectacles very much did not sell out. They, yeah. they had, you said, hundreds of thousands of unsold units. Reportedly, yeah. Yeah, reportedly. So uh, Facebook is not about to steal an unsuccessful idea. Yeah. And they've already got Oculus anyway uh, on the VR end of the spectrum. Yeah, and, and I'm wondering, you know, when we are going to start seeing real AR glasses in this kind of useful form factor. I feel like Google Glass happened and then went away. Yep. And since then, the only things we've really seen from an AR perspective have been very industrial, very enterprise. The ODG right. stuff, for instance. Basically, yeah. I yeah. mean, the, the AR spectrum right now is either smartphone-based AR, like Pokemon Go, or very heavy-duty glasses, like you know, industrial use cases, the, uh, yeah. Uh, and and I th and I think that's I think that's because of the cost of yeah. the equipment needed to uh, create lightweight usable AR glasses because I've I've seen those ODG AR mm -hmm. glasses uh, at various Qualcomm events. Yeah, they're and very bulky. They're they're bulky, but they're neat. Um, but they're also I think a thousand dollars. Yeah, I mean so, I've yeah. used similar glasses from companies like Vuzix. That they're all it's it's. This is the holy grail of what you'd want in AR glasses, but these are basically just cameras for your face. Okay, okay. Uh, let's take another question. With augmented reality, someone says, Magic Leap is due out soon. Sure it is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> good one. <laughs> funny. Yeah, and that, you're I mean, funny. The, one of the big problems with Magic Leap, or at least reportedly, is that they're having trouble packing their very complicated technology into as small a form factor as they promise, which is the whole point. Yeah, yeah, I believe uh, it's the, it, it is currently the Magic Leap uh, fanny pack full of electronics, right? Yep, basically. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's kind of like the, uh, uh, that VR backpack that we tested. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that was a funny product. Um, but, uh, okay, so uh, the price of, okay, so these are $149, $149.99. Yep. Um, and you said the previous generation was one twenty nine ninety nine. Yep. And really, what you're getting for that twenty extra dollars is waterproofing, uh, the ability to take still photos, and a couple software improvements, like the fact that uh, HD snaps transfer to the app uh, a couple uh, mm -hmm. a bit faster. And one for that one hundred and fifty dollars, you get you get the case and the cable and the glasses. Yep. Case, cable, glasses. Okay. Okay. That's about it. And it comes with in a little uh, canister. Okay, great. So that is the Snapchat Spectacles version 2. Uh, we gave them a three-star rating because they are sort of a, an interesting little tributary eddy of the uh, yeah. consumer electronics world. Yeah. You know what? In, in what they do, which is uh, you know, take surprisingly good uh, HD audio and video in a pretty small form factor, they're pretty good. The fact is that you just can't use them for a whole lot. And then for Snapchat users, does it really augment your experience that much? Is it worth $150 to get these sort of first-person snaps where, you know, the, you, you can't live stream with these. It, it, it's a delay of whenever you can get the snaps back into your app, edit them, and then send them out like normal. So is that worth $150? Bucks? There's, a, there's a certain category of products we look at here at PC Mag, which I think of as, it works, but why? Right. And uh, the Snapchat Spectacles 2 certainly fit into that category. Thank you all for watching. This has been One Cool Thing with PCMag.com. Uh, we will be back tomorrow live on Facebook at 10 a.m. Eastern with another cool thing. If you are on YouTube, please like and subscribe. Check back daily on PCMag's page. And uh, every weekday, we will have another cool thing for you.